head of investment research at BD Swiss, bringing our weekly market outlook with my co-host, Frank Walbaum. Uh, I'm going to give you the uh, fundamental background to the markets, and Frank will tell you how he's thinking of trading it uh, largely, but not entirely, especially now from a uh, technical point of view. But before I do, of course, every week I have to tell you that the uh, trading involves risks, that prices can go down as well as up, and you should watch your stops. Right. <clears throat> well, let's get started. There are three things to talk about this week. Russia, Russia, and Russia. That's basically what's moving the markets. You can see from this graph uh, and the ones following, the blue line is the Russian ruble, uh, and which is really the, the fastest in, in way that the market has to indicate its view on what's going on with Russia and Ukraine. Uh, and we can just see how well it, a lot of other asset classes are matching up against it or moving along with it. In this case, we have uh, the Russian ruble uh, inverted. So when it goes up, it means dollar ruble is going down. Dollar ruble going down means that ruble is strengthening. In other words, it's becoming less risky. And you can see how this is like how it compares with the U.S. stock market, the S&P 500 index. Uh, so the S&P 500 index, which is really the risk gauge for global markets, is tracking the ruble very closely. Uh, everybody's just watching there and what's watching what's going on and wondering what's going on. Uh, you know, over the weekend, there was a lot of news that came out uh, on two things. Well, for, President uh, Macron of France managed to broker a uh, summit between Putin and Biden. That's uh, quite uh, quite remarkable. And the condition that uh, Biden's put on this was that uh, Russia can't invade. Uh, obviously, they're not going to meet if Russia is invading. So that's very hopeful. Uh, the terms of that will be worked out on Thursday when the foreign ministers meet. So it looks like, in theory, that there's at least a week or two without an invasion. But I'd like just like to quote you from to you from White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki. Uh, she said, "We are always ready for diplomacy. We are also ready to impose swift and severe consequences should Russia instead choose war." And currently, Russia appears to be continuing preparations for a full-scale assault on Ukraine very soon. So that's why, even though you have this uh, event, this summit coming up, and it looks like they're uh, maybe moving a bit towards uh, diplomacy, and they aren't dancing in the streets quite yet. Uh, we're not uh, over, the, over the hump. So there is still a lot of risk in the market. Uh, that's why you saw this morning the yen and Swiss franc are the best performing uh, uh, currencies. Uh, what is performing well here is gold. Uh, you know, I don't know, do you know that song by War, what is it good for? Well, the answer is it's good for gold. Gold has been tracking the ruble or in, uh, as dollar ruble goes up, indicating greater chances of war, gold goes up. Although it's not, uh, you can see at the end uh, on Friday, the connection wasn't that strong. It's being, so it's, it's a little limited. It isn't moving on a one for one basis. Uh, so perhaps it isn't the, the risk asset, a risk off asset that it once used to be. Frank, I was wondering if you have a view on gold. Yeah, it's always uh, quite strong to the uh, upside. The point being only is where to enter because the market has been pushing towards much higher price areas. And that's exactly where I would say, well, markets, if they return towards slightly lower levels, uh, it would be something of us uh, for us of interest. What do we see in the charts? The market has been uh, breaking higher. We see this week we are starting slightly lower, which actually would be of a chance to enter the market. Two things only, and the problem is the current uh, trend lines. Uh, we are really trading at a bit of a resistance point here, and I'm not really sure if the market starts breaking uh, out to the upside. We've seen that here, several weeks the markets went higher and then somehow corrected again here before resuming with a recent uh, uptrend momentum. But we are running back into that huge resistance area where the market starts uh, uh, pushing, uh, potentially at least, starts pushing towards lower areas. So again, what we could do is uh, instead of using this as a targetable area, we could also say, look, if that um, retracement here, Marshall, is over, I think we could enter and just place a buy stop. Again, what moves 
to the downside on Monday, Tuesday might uh, resume the uptrend again. And that's where we could say, okay, if the market starts regaining strength, point of entry would be, and that's also the beauty here, we have this psychological uh, 1900 resistance area. As long as we stay below the 1900 area, we might see the market fading lower. But if we are breaking the 1900, 1900 US dollar per ounce, then this could be an entry opportunity here for us. So I would be patiently waiting here uh, for now. And uh, let's uh, check out the chart on a regular basis. We can see we are running into some thin ice area, I would say, but the current conditions obviously is really a super positive, super strong in terms of a, uh, a gold rally, another gold push towards higher levels. Marshall, beforehand, you also talked about, let me uh, move over my screen here, you talked about the uh, Russian ruble, and that's something interesting. Oh, yeah. It's kind of a very risky, it's a risky um, currency uh, to trade, and I wouldn't really touch it. The spread is super high, but um, definitely it's weakening. I mean, you showed the inverted chart, now we can see here, uh, on a, a trading view that the market had run towards some high points here, which means the dollar picked up steam, but it is weakening again. Clear a point, the market is rather trading towards the 77 and 78 area. With that, back to you, but I think, yes, your question, gold definitely moving much higher, and I would guess that the market has quite a lot of room to grow and uh, quite a lot of room again towards, uh, towards the upside. Right. Uh, well, uh... Yeah, first, I'd just like to say that I wouldn't recommend that anybody try to trade the ruble. First of all, the spreads are going to be very wide. And secondly, as you can see from this graph, they're just long periods when it doesn't trade at all. Uh, this is the professional market, the interbank market. And you can see that even the interbank market is closed for half the day when, when Russia isn't around, or when Moscow isn't around. <laughs> well, because Russia uh, covers, what, nine time zones. Uh, so yeah, I would suggest if you're interested in playing that, you just if you're interested in playing the uh, the war, you play one of the proxies, not uh, try to play the ruble itself. Another proxy is oil. You can see that the oil market has also been tracking uh, the ruble pretty well. Uh, in this case, it it tracks with dollar ruble. The, in that when there's more risk, there's more the dollar ruble goes up. And of course, among the risks is that uh, the, the US imposes uh, sanctions on Russian oil exports, uh, embargoes Russian oil. That would send the price of oil soaring. Uh, Russia is one of the biggest uh, pr producers of, or exporters of oil in the world. Uh, it would be, you know, choke off something, I think it's around 10 million barrels a day. So that would have a big impact. This graph shows the, uh, price of Brent, the red is the red line versus the Russian ruble. And you can see how that's been trending upwards. I was wondering, uh, do you have a view on oil, Frank? Yeah, um, we actually had a short trade on and I've just closed it this morning as the market had been pushing towards um, towards higher levels um, again. Again, this trend could be of changing nature. So let's examine this for a second here. Um, we had last week the market turning lower and I felt like, hey, that might be uh, a bit of a, a push towards lower levels. The crisis could be fading a little bit. There was a uh, a bit the news uh, towards mid of last week, the market could be trending to the downside here, and uh, the trend was uh, immediately uh, changing somehow. In the end, then last week on Friday, the market trended indeed lower, but really regained uh, momentum to the upside. So a critical a pin bar, a technical pattern which would cause uh, market momentum to be again of a positive nature here. And Marsha, what I see here right now is that the market had been uh, turning to the downside again on Monday. Again, same story, a bit of the buy the dip opportunity here, slightly lower now, and then boom, it could kind of turn again further to the upside. So what I would do right now here is clearly uh, uh, applying a buy stop order. Since you're also mentioning this, I think it makes perfect sense. So we'll simply wait for the retracement to be over, say 9070. Let me check how this looks like. 9070 area stop loss could be at the lows here, 8080 at 20. That's something potentially really helping us here. And then I would say, let's go for higher targets, 98. And then, holy cow, Marshall, we are really approaching the $100 <laughs> mark. So that's like uh, really happening quickly. 
let me check out if that positioning makes sense. Yeah, bit of a smaller position, but uh, I'd rather enter like uh, one small position first and then we'll see how the market, if it goes X and then potentially add in another position, should the market turn lower, I would even leave this buy stop order in. Again, buy stop, yeah? So we only buy when the market turns uh, towards the upside and uh, really triggers our order. Some might say, hey, why not buying the market right now? Yes you'd enter at a better price, definitely. But what I could see also is that the market does not resume the uptrend, but instead, of course, kind of fades lower, then, well, basically you are in a losing position, which is why I would like to play this with a buy stop uh, order. Quickly, Marshall, on that note, also the Canadian dollar, it has been interesting oh, yeah. also as of recently, but uh, the last few weeks, though, they were in a simply sideways pattern. And the question is now what the US dollar does here compared to the Canadian, to the loony, as we call it, Again, also the market looks to me like a bit of an uptrend momentum. It could, uh, could cause this currency pair to turn higher, but I would instead blame the US dollar with potentially strength following up. And that means the dollar cat currency pair could go higher. As fundamentally, the Canadian dollar I see as rather stronger. Well, it has been trading on the weaker side here recently, but um, some strengthening momentum in the Canadian dollar is what I would see here as a potential chance uh, for the current uh, market momentum. Marshall, back to you. So all covered, we have a, sh uh, we have a, a buy stop order in play and uh, Dollar Cat will examine for some further market momentum. Yeah, uh, I think Dollar Cat is very interesting because it's it, it's like usually considered an oil currency that it tends to move along with oil, but it's not right now. Uh, it's moving along with Dollar Ruble. Uh, you can see that in this graph, it's uh, pretty much following dollar dollar ruble uh, because the commodity currency, even though the commodity currencies will benefit ultimately, I think, if if Russia gets embargoed, because the price of commodities will go up. The uh, Russia is a huge exporter of oil and iron and other commodities that these cu countries produce, but uh, the fear is that it will just dampen economic growth globally and that might outweigh any impact the price might go up but if the volume that they sell falls then they may, they make less money so i think that's why the canadian dollar is following risk sentiment and not fo necessarily following the oil price uh euro swissy is also following risk sentiment and that's been one of the things keeping the uh the euro down Oh, uh, people are just uh, who are worried about war in Europe are moving out of euros and into Switzerland. You know, in Switzerland, until recently, every house was required to have a bomb shelter. I lived in Switzerland and I had lived in a house and it had a bomb shelter. And just like every other bomb shelter in the country, we use ours for storing our wine. Uh, if there is a war in Europe, the Swiss will probably spend the whole time being drunk in their basements. But uh, they will be safe, unlike people in other parts of the of the continent. So I think also there are questions about why the when, when whether the ECB might tighten. The market has been forecasting a, a rise in rates this year, but um, several members of the um, European of the European uh, central bank have been pushing back on this idea. I think that's also been weakening the euro. Right, do you have any view on the euro and especially euro Swiss? Uh, oh, euro Swiss, you haven't checked out. Uh, let me uh, open the charts and um, have a look on what might move here. Let me take the screen over also, first of all here. I haven't been focusing on it since, uh, well, it was not always, not always um, an interesting currency. I remember also, myself having traded for that uh, family office in Germany, uh, uh, our big boss, well, he was always keen on trading the Swissy until that day when the market had moved uh, to the exact <laughs> opposite direction, big part, and uh, he was he insisted on keeping on it on, and uh, well, uh, he, he lost a bit of money. Uh, currently, the market is trading lower, and uh, yes, we've seen some movement to the upside here, but we can also see, let me make this a fresh chart here. I'm sorry about the background noise, by the way, the gardening guys are here just uh, outside and clearing up stuff. Um, uh, the uh, 105.60 area, that's the clear resistance point, previously support, uh, several times has been touching this uh, area. And uh, the weekly now kind of causes this market 
Marshall, you called it the um, the uh, uh, Christine Lagarde effect, I think, right? When the market <laughs> pushed the roof. <laughs> yes. um, now it looks like weakening, I think. So like, it looks a bit weaker yeah. to me right now, but um, I wouldn't trade it as such. I think it currently looking at some technical uh, levels, the moving average, the 50 is causing this market to kind of really find some resistance point here, might be fading again. So I would rather look for uh, sell opportunities and I would rather kind of uh, uh, think that this market uh, uh, goes back to the uh, downward area here. Several targets could be applied. The recent levels are pretty clear to observe. That's where the markets did not fall further once, twice here again. Same story once, twice here, third, fourth time. Lots of uh, uh, tackling around it here. To apply a sell stop could be something interesting and then a simple easy thing is just uh, Put the, uh, put the uh, stop loss towards the 104.60 area. That's what I would say here. It makes perfect sense to me. If you're looking at this then from a risk reward perspective, we could be well in also with a position, just a 40 pip stop loss, first target 47 and then say 90 pips. So downward momentum is what I would see. And again, also daily chart here, this week is starting to push slightly higher first of all, and that could be fading. And then we have a trade which would work on the weekly, the long-term chart as well as similarly on the daily chart, which is actually quite cool. So yeah, uh, thanks for pointing this out, Marshall. I think that's a, it's a potentially good entry opportunity, I think, which we digged out here right now if the market falls further. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, anything about Euro dollar? Euro dollar, well, um, good, good question. It's been trending not so much recently and the markets on the medium to longer term uh, uh, momentum are really still roller coaster right that's actually also the topic of the day here for the odd assets which i'm uh, preparing also um i see still the big uncertainty war in the ukraine or not yeah. uh, risk on sentiment or not and it's just like potentially better to play markets of some short-term moves looking at those we could sell into this rally this is like something interesting for the day so far the market has been pushing just towards one direction the next ceiling that's the ATR, the uh, average true range it's called. It doesn't tell us that the market goes to this level or to the lower support area, but uh, it's basically just telling us that the range, the previous daily uh, day's range uh, uh, could be at that area where selling pressure might kick in. And if we're looking backwards, we see a lot of resistance points here. So that's something where I would say, hey, let's check out how this market goes. See that blue box as for the uh, a little bit of a resistance area where the market when it goes to this re region here uh, might kind of just fade lower so i would say some interesting opportunities are pretty much around the 11390 area or again psychological resistance 114 yeah so that's again where yeah. i would look for entry opportunities um, uh, what you could do also is like check out for potential entry points here uh, to short the market a few times right so my point is i would wait first but uh, the opportunity also what i could do is like to have a few small orders here and just uh, put a master say stop loss just above the high but if the market goes here to this area um, imagine this as an entry opportunity just another small order here and see how it goes uh, subsequently best obviously here the pro version would be look for any fading markets any pin bar any candles which kind of really are being rejected and then sell into this rally here i think that's exactly what i would do so yeah euro rising generally we see the us dollar as a as a weakening currency let's uh, uh, move to the pound for a second here. Also, I've adjusted my stop loss last week. This trade is still on actually for me, the uh, sell order here or the sell trade, not the sell order. And, uh, and we might still see also a bit of a fading momentum towards the US dollar. But Marshall, we have a holiday today in the US, right? So question yeah. is anyways, is momentum uh, limited uh, for the day? I'm not sure. We might see just limited momentum in the dollar and in stock markets anyways. Yeah, the, the stock market is closed, but the futures market is open. So you'll be still be able to trade the the, uh, the futures and they will give us an indication of what what of what people are yeah. thinking. Uh, yeah, again, the futures also, since you mentioned that uh, they had moved, they had started at lower prices. Obviously, Ukraine conflict is the number one headline, but they've moved slightly higher, though. I think it's still it's still a fading risk sentiment for now. Um, yeah. Yeah. When I checked it this morning, the. S&P 500 and DAX futures were up about 0.8, 0 0.9% before. Uh, but looking at the what's happening is in Asian stock markets, most of them are lower. So I don't know. I think people are just as confused as 
Jen Psaki was, yeah, we're uh, heading towards the summit, but we don't see the Russians retreating either. Right, uh, now, when we're talking about risk sentiment and global growth, Aussie yen is really the, uh, should be the, the, the main barometer here. Uh, you know, Aussie is the main, the, the currency you buy when you think global growth is going to go well, and the yen is the main safe haven currency. So this should be the most sensitive risk barometer and the, really the best way to, to play this, uh, this whole thing. You can see though, it's kind of interesting. Uh, it did track very well, but then on Friday, uh, you can see there was a big divergence that uh, the Russian ruble really weakened a lot, but Aussie yen didn't come down as much. Uh, you can see the I've got the, the uh, arrows pointing to that divergence there. So I wonder if that means people's fear of, uh, of, of the, war is fading, or it means the uh, implications for other markets or the impact on other markets is fading, or that people are thinking differently about uh, Aussie yen. One thing I would argue is that actually Australia will be, would be a big beneficiary of, of an embargo against Russian exports. You know, one of Russia's biggest exports is iron and iron products, which accounts for about a third of Australia's exports. Um, as long as this doesn't crash the Chinese housing market, I think this uh, war could be good for Australia. So uh, I, I'm not sure about this uh, this pair as the, a good barometer of uh, a pure barometer of risk sentiment right now. Uh, do you have any any view on on Aussie and yen and Aussie yen um, separately or together? Yeah, um, let me let me start with the Aussie US dollar also since the weakness. Okay. Uh, in the Australian dollar can be clearly seen, uh, uh, sorry, in the, yeah, the weakness in the US dollar uh, can be seen. Uh, the Aussie is kind of benefiting from it. And uh, yeah, thinking of it that, uh, from that side, uh, Marshall, uh, fundamentally uh, makes perfect sense. It could be uh, that thing which is moving uh, the Australian uh, the Australian figures to the upside and also causing demand for the Australian dollar in general. I wouldn't say also that the Aussie moving higher is beneficial for the stock markets in this time, but now I have a reason which you just gave me um, for that matter, which makes perfect sense looking at it from the Australian dollar um, perspective. Looking at it against the Japanese yen, however, well, I think the yen uh, should the crisis uh, kind of worsen a bit, uh, it could gear up. And I would say uh, um, a clear currency pair to sell is definitely, of course, the Aussie yen. That number one uh, risk or positive or negative risk uh, you know, market uh, market uh, 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 currency pair. And uh, we would have some entry opportunity at 82.45. So that's something where I would see it's a clear, and that's the trade which jumps clear into my into my eyes right now. The market, whenever I'm moving higher, subsequently oftentimes gives me fading momentum after this so-called pin bar, a little indicator with a smiling face in this case would have been perfectly hitting it here uh, to perfection. Uh, market thereafter moved even towards the next support area. So the first target would have been hit given the fact that it would have entered at this area. We have another bit of a hidden, hidden or hiding a pin bar here, hidden as it's kind of covered there. The wick is covered to the long, to the left side here. This one, you can see that, that's actually my bread and butter trade. Um, these ones here where the market to the left side gives me a lot of uh, free space. The market basically has not traded into this area. So it gives you a lot of uh, inside full momentum towards falling prices. That one though is uh, kind of uh, in context. So it's in, in, um, in traffic, I would call it, and also has a bit of a, re a reason behind it. So sell stock, 82.45. Stop loss at 83, say 15, and first target could be also that higher area again, which we had seen previously. And with this, Marshall, we'd have a huge uh, reward to risk uh, a trade here. So 70, oh. looking at the central number, say 70 pips of uh, 75 pips of stop loss max, and then 170 pips of profit. So that's really a huge profit margin here on that uh, on that opportunity. I think makes perfect sense if the Japanese yen can gear up momentum. Yeah, then this is the one to trade and this is the one to um, uh, to kind of really uh, look forward to. Wow, okay, sounds like a good idea. Right, uh, what else? Well, that, now let's, uh, I'm gonna switch, uh, switch gears a bit and just talk about what we're looking for this week. Uh, one of the main things that uh, has been moving the market recently, and I think will continue to do, is the 
it's a question of what the Fed is going to do at its March meeting. You know, uh, a few weeks ago, if you look at this graph here, it gives the, prob the probability of a rate hike uh, at the uh, March meeting. Uh, a week ago, the gray bar, as you can see, the market was pretty much evenly divided between the view of whether they were going to hike to 50 basis points or hike to 75 basis points. Uh, but now the red bars show that uh, the market's overwhelmingly favoring a 25 basis point hike to 50 basis points. Uh, I think that's been one of the key uh, questions that people have been uh, debating here. Uh, you, you can see the graph on the right shows the probabilities of the number of hikes uh, at the March meeting. Back in January, well, the red bars show the odds of no hike, and the blue bars show the odds of one hike to 50 basis points. And in January, people thought that was a first 40% chance of no hike, but gradually that uh, possibility disappeared. And people went very much forwards, almost a uh, 100% probability of just one hike. But then what happened was we had the very strong uh, US uh, non-farm payrolls for, for January. And then we had the much higher than expected consumer price index for January. And people went almost to 100% probability of a, two, a 50 basis point hike. But recently that Possibly, probably because of the war and uh, the possibility of war and the risks to global growth that that portends, the pro probability of a 50 basis point hike has declined and the probability of a 25 basis point hike has resumed. This is one of the major thing, probably the major thing the markets are focusing on short term for the dollar. Obviously a 50 basis point hike would be more beneficial, would be better for the dollar, 20, 25 basis point less. And this is one of the reasons I think the dollar is likely to retrace a bit of its uh, strength over the next um, few weeks. Uh, a lot of this depends on, on uh, Friday's indicators. On Friday, we have the uh, personal income and spending, and with that, the personal consumption expenditure deflators, the PCE deflators. The market is looking for a further rise in them. The uh, headline figure is the red line. The core figure is the blue line. They look for a headline figure to rise to 6% and core to 52 so these are very bad. Now, you know, the PCE deflators are the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. Although the market doesn't credit them like that, the market puts more emphasis on the consumer price index. Technically, the Fed is being driven by the PCE deflators. Uh, technically, that's how they define inflation. Uh, so if these continue to rise, I think it could uh, promote more thoughts of a return back to people thinking of a 50 basis point hike. Uh, the key thing to be to watch for is whether the PCE deflators come out higher than expected. Uh, if they do, then I think that uh, would in sharply increase the odds of a 50 basis point hike, and I think that would boost the dollar. So that's one of the things, main things to watch about Friday's PCE deflators. And then uh, tomorrow night, or early uh, Wednesday morning, we have the Reserve Bank of New Zealand meeting. There, they've already hiked twice. Uh, the question is, and pretty much everybody agrees they're gonna hike again at this meeting. The question is, are they gonna hike 25 basis points or 50 basis points? Uh, you can see here that the market's pricing in 31 basis points of tightening, uh, which is a 16% chance of, oh, Sorry, I misspelled that. Uh, chance of a 50 basis point hike. The thing is, inflation is higher than expected in uh, out of control in New Zealand. But on the other hand, uh, the employment situation isn't doing so well. Employment in the fourth quarter was up only 0.1 percent quarter on quarter. Participation rate is falling, so they've got to balance. Uh, you know, they they're one of these dual mandate countries that has to encourage manage price stability and maximum employment. So they have to, there's a, a balance there that they have to keep. I expect that it's going to wind up a lot like the Bank of England meeting recently. I think they'll cons the, the minutes are likely to show that they'll consider raising by 50 basis points, but ultimately I think they're gonna hike by 25 basis points. 
But again, like what happened with the Bank of England meeting, they didn't have to hike by 50 basis points. All that had to happen is people had to know that they were thinking about it, and that they thought, wow, this is more hawkish than we expected, and that boosted the pound. And I think we could have the same effect for the New Zealand dollar after that meeting. Morning, Frank, do you have a view on the New Zealand dollar, on the Kiwi? Not so, uh, not so much, to be honest, and not as as strong as I would say. Yes, yeah, slightly lower currently. It's what I would say. I'm not really sure if the impact on the economy, uh, similarly to what we discussed right now uh, about the Australian dollar, is as strong for the New Zealand dollar. However, on the weekend we had some uh, we had some nice beef from New Zealand, which was uh, which was actually great. But uh, yeah, on the other hand, in general. Um, I think that there's some sort of resistance play here happening right now, but it's also potentially fading. So the market, if breaking uh, beyond the uh, 80, sorry, 68, 67 area here, then the upside could be opened again, uh, but it's not really looking as clear as the Australian dollar. Let me assess this from this perspective. We can see that uh, the resistance play has been uh, done and the market is starting to fade uh, towards higher levels. Support here on the left, Resistance now on the right, if broken, both this uh, market, uh, as I said, could kind of reach easily the 68, 69 area, even looking at that uh, from this perspective. So yeah, the market is moving higher. That would be something interesting for, a, or would kind of be insightful for a stronger New Zealand dollar potentially. The US dollar, however, fading. And as we said, right, so um, you, you mentioned also the interest rate decisions, Marshall, in the US. Uh, I'm not really sure. Is that just something which is not really happening? Or I think market participants really don't believe it at the moment. And the dollar is rather soft so far. However, of course, um, the amount of news we expect from the US uh, are in a way potentially rather limited as uh, it's, it's been laid out already that several, uh, several news events, several rate hikes are going to come. So if that's uh, happening, then that might be an easy way, an easy target for a bit of a stronger dollar, but maybe it's just already priced in as we, as we would say, and hence uh, the market momentum might be of different nature. So yeah, currently slightly positive. I would say I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't really sell it as such. I would look for selling opportunities only at lower levels, say if the market fades based on the uh, price action around the 67 resistance area, this blue box basically coinciding. Let me make this clear here so you can, guys can see it. That's the clear zone, yeah? So previously support, now turning here at the right side into the resistance area, and that's where exactly the market is going to decide how the market goes, either again to the upside or again falling, and then that's what I would uh, look for here. Okay, yeah, the Kiwi, I don't really understand what's going on <coughs> with New Zealand. What really surprises me is that the Aussie Kiwi has been falling. That uh, Actually, I think last week the Kiwi was the strongest currency, and it's been gaining against the Australian dollar, which I don't see any reason to, because uh, no matter what happens with Russia, the pr that's not going to affect the price of milk, but it will affect the price of iron. Uh, today, we have the preliminary purchasing managers coming out. Uh, manufacturing is expected to be largely unchanged for the European countries. I had to check my spreadsheet because uh, usually you don't get zeros, but so, yeah, they're expected to be unchanged uh, and not much for the UK, change for the UK and the US. The good thing, though, is that the service sector indices are expected to be up pretty, pretty well across the board. Uh, we've already had the Japanese uh, PMIs out, though, and they were disastrous on both counts. So I wonder about these market forecasts. I wonder how accurate they're going to be. If they're true, uh, it would be very good if the service sector did improve, even as the Omicron variant swamps the world. Uh, I think uh, it would show that people are learning to live with the virus, and that would be good for the growth-sensitive currencies like the Aussie and the Kiwi. An interesting point, uh, apparently the UK is set to um, announce this week, perhaps even today, that people infected with uh, COVID-19 don't have to isolate at all, that they're not going to have to, to uh, self-isolate, meaning that we've, they, they, they're going to a, um, we're going to live with it regime that, uh, you know, you don't have to, if you catch a cold, you're not required to stay home. And if you catch COVID-19, you're not required to stay home. This is a big experiment. And if it proves successful, then uh, a lot of other countries may imitate this or may follow suit. And I think this would be very positive for growth. Uh, I'm not so positive 
I wonder how it will be for people's health. Uh, finally, as for positioning, uh, the speculators were cutting people cutting their long dollar positions over the last week, mostly by adding to long euro, and they flipped through to long sterling from short sterling. On the other hand, they added to their short yen and they cut their Canadian dollar longs. <laughs> it's interesting, the thing they're most long of is the euro. Pardon. And the number one is the DX, number two is the DXY index. So uh, they're kind of spec, speculators are sort of hedging their bets. Um, anyway, that's it for me. Uh, Frank, do you have anything to add? Any currencies yeah, or anything that we, we didn't yeah, uh, we didn't mention? Yeah, a few 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 little things potentially. Let me uh, let me browse over the stuff. Oops, now my mouse is getting buggy here. Okay, there we go. Um, uh, you mentioned the uh, the dollar index, and that's uh, the extremely interesting part here, Marshall. Great, I would have forgotten about this. A um, dollar index is marching towards the support area. Yeah? It has kind of uh, found support several times on top of this support range here, and it was always a reliable source of well. Once we go to the support area, we might break through it and then come back to the upside as a certain strength then coming back. Uh, if the dollar index falls, that means the US dollar in general mostly uh, mostly uh, mostly accurate, obviously for the euro and then the euro dollar currency pair, but also uh, a few of the other currencies which are uh, kind of combined here in the dollar index. Um, what I mean is like um, uh, by the trend, we should believe this market kind of maybe fades again here and starts to gain momentum to the upside and we could see a stronger dollar. However, even after such a long time, trends always change at, uh, at some point, we might see further fa fading momentum and we might see that uh, the dollar index is just giving us further negative headlines. The weekly chart don't tell me anything much. The weekly chart, however, tell me that there might be some resistance which is strong causing for market momentum to turn lower. I'm looking at it, however, here from the, uh, from the long-term perspective, I still feel that uh, this market is just starting to gear up momentum potentially. We're trading towards the end of February. Not that this is any uh, insightful uh, idea, but we could see the market turning higher. I would believe uh, and would look for a bit of a stronger dollar, first of all, uh, to begin with. But uh, that's, of course, the, the definitely difficult, uh, difficult situation for now. We can see two things also. The euro has been fading, as I said, in the current resistance play. It looks, and let's, uh, let's uh, examine this in the next, say, uh, 30 minutes. It looks like it's kind of finding some sort of resistance play here, some sort of pin bar like this on the short-term chart. And we tag exactly the daily ATR. Could be something interesting for us here to sell. So I'm looking for the sell opportunity here. And I'm still on the pound short. Obviously, as I said, the stop loss is still up the high here. We'll wait for this and see how markets go. Uh, early on, Marshall, when we talked about stock markets, I said also the uh, NASDAQ, as well as all other uh, indices, or most other indices, started the week much lower and have regained yeah. momentum, but it still looks like fading interest. Yeah. So the market started lower, coming higher, but it looks like they are fading again. I, I think it's not a good time here right now to buy the dip, but rather to sell the rally or to sell into these into the stronger uh, market moves here. The markets are really badly behaving. Currently, we are trading below in quite a few indices, below the uh, 50 moving average. The Nasdaq at least is showing that this is like the weakness, uh, the weak point here. The Dow Jones also is tra trading weaker. Also, this one looks to me like not really keen. I mean, if I'm looking at the market, Yes, it is kind of in an uptrend, but it's just really, it's not really keen on moving higher. And I think too many points uh, are being done right now, especially the Federal Reserve starting with their program. However, in the past, when they started hiking rates, it was not always, Marshall, uh, you talked about it several weeks back, it was not always bad for stock markets after an initial shock potentially, but um, yeah. the markets are currently fading. We see the S&P 500 trading to the downside also in a way. So it's all like a bit of a, to me, like a bit of a deadly mix, which I see as not positive for markets. I think we might just see or get a certain catalyst, whatever that is. Not so much from the virus front. I think this is really fading. Um, 
also some of my friends here uh, from the hotel industry, one GM here, they've been preparing a letter for the government in Thailand to really uh, cause more change in the current market movement here, as the government is just making it difficult for tourists to come. However, most neighboring countries, Vietnam, Cambodia, even Singapore is just opening or are opening up and that's really causing, of course, uh, not so many tourists to come here, but instead moving around other countries as the access is pretty much easier. Oil starts to go higher. We can see that also, so the buy stop might be triggered. I'm blasting this out for our VIP clients also soon. So that looks quite positive with this strong uh, oil market. Marshall named it also. The Canadian dollar strength should have been expected. It's just not following. I think uh, has rather to do with both the US dollar and the Canadian dollar. And yeah, gold, as I said, uh, marching right, uh, um, right up to the upside area, looking good. A few words maybe on the dollar, JP. It's looking a bit weaker, I think, here, but uh, I wouldn't also trade it as such. It's just a bit of a, a, bit of a boring uh, market here at the moment, but it looks like the Japanese yen is gearing up steam. So that's how I would say this is uh, working out. So Marshall, if you need to transfer something to uh, Japan, huh, you <laughs> might be getting pricey at some point. <laughs> yeah, my, uh, <coughs> my daughter's rent is coming up. Uh, in fact, she just called me while we were on this call. I gotta send, I gotta send it to her. Well, okay. Yeah. That's it. that's it for me. Uh, thank you very cool. much. Uh, are there any questions? I didn't oh, see sure. any questions. It's been a quiet group actually today. Yeah, big group, so if, but quiet. Yeah. So, so if no questions, well then, thank you very much, Frank. It was great talking with you as always, uh, and thank you very much for attending. Thanks, Marshall. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Okay. Bye.